Good afternoon, Mikhail. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, you said after the win against Norwich that you'd enjoyed the best 10 to 15 days of your managerial career. What's the last five days been like since the win? <laughs> <laughs> They've been even better because winning uh, always helps because um, the boys were happy because um, we experienced um, the reaction of the fans towards the team on the day and um, and winning the first match and getting out of the blocks in the Premier League it was a, a vital part of our next moment. So, very happy. In terms of team news, do you have any major concerns going into the match It's Burnley? No, hopefully we'll get some players back. Um, everybody trained well this week. Uh, obviously, we have still granite uh, suspended um, and the rest, hopefully, they will be fine. And Thomas Partey didn't start the last match. He did come on, of course. So, is mm. he fit enough to start against Burnley? He is there. He's been training in and out this week. Um, his load had to be managed uh, because... Uh, it was in early stages of the injury and, and what he had, but he's pushing everybody as he always does and uh, and he wants to be involved. So they will make the decision for the weekend what is best for him. And you made seven changes for that match last weekend. Um, given the end result and some of the impressive individual performances we saw, how tempted are you to keep things roughly the same and how important is it for continuity's sake to have a sort of consistent team selection? There is always always a balance that has to be involved. Uh, there is always uh, the importance of um, the performances that individually they put, but collectively what happened and understand the reasons it was because of the individuals or because of the execution of those individuals had on the plan uh, that was put in place and the same would be for Burnley. So let's see, everybody trained well and um, tomorrow there is another session. So let's see what is best to, to beat Burnley. And you gave a debut to Aaron Ramsdale, who did well, kept a clean sheet as well. Um, will you be starting him again this weekend? And how has Ben Leonard reacted in training? It's the same in every position. Um, we want them to make each other better. Um, we are competing against the opponents. We are not competing against each other here. We are just trying to bring players that can raise the level of, of the player that is playing the position, the level of the team, the level of the club. And this is the only reason. Um, obviously, for Benny, we're in a, it was in a, a pleasing um, communication when I told him that he wasn't playing. But uh, he's a top professional and a top person, and uh, he should be disappointed. And he should support his teammates like they all done with with him every time he's played. And it's exactly what he's done. And Bernie are yet to win in the Premier League this season. It, it was a tough game. It was a one-one draw last season. That fixture. Um, how weary are you of how desperate they'll be to try and get their first win of the season? Yeah, they, obviously they had some difficulties to get uh, results. Obviously during games that uh, the games that I watch, they've been pretty unlucky in certain moments because they have moments of real dominance and they end up losing football matches. We know how tough it is to go to Burnley. We know the game we're going to expect out there and we will be prepared for that. And Sean Dyche has been announced today that he signed a new deal at Burnley. Um, how impressed have you been with the work he's done at the football club? I think he deserves huge credit uh, because with the resources uh, that he had, the way he has managed to establish the club in the Premier League um, and how he's done it over the years and he has a stick to his beliefs and he's done it his own way and he has created a unique identity on the football club, which is something that it's uh, very difficult to do in this league. Um, so credit to him and obviously congratulations thank you Mikhail thank you thanks Vi we'll go to Paul Gilmore from Sky hi Mikhail hi Mikhail what were your reasons for going with Aaron Ramsdale over Bart Leno that uh, we have to change something and um, and Aaron has been coming here to try to to make us better and uh, we need a result on the day and I decided to to play him, that's all. There were reports in Germany that Bernd Leno might come back in for the North London Derby. Are you going to decide sort of certain games for the players or what is your thought process? I don't know where they are coming from, but they are ahead of me. And uh, I think I am the one who picks the team at the weekend and sometimes I read things that uh, I haven't decided yet. So they give me ideas at the most but uh, but nothing else because um, i haven't made a decision for saturday so imagine for the north london derby it is burnley 
uh, away this weekend. Um, Johan Gunvalsson uh, suggested they hope to make things as uncomfortable for Arsenal as possible. How well equipped is your team in, in dealing with the threat and the specific threat Burnley bring? Yeah, obviously it's going to be a completely different game than when we played against Norwich because of the the qualities, the game that they proposed, uh, where they want to take the game to, and uh, we'll have to try to avoid that as much as possible and do the opposite thing. Jurgen Klopp earlier this season criticised them for their for their tackling, and, and that theme came up again uh, after the Everton game on on Monday. Uh, Goodmanson says that they can't be that dangerous because they're not being given red cards. It's up to the referees, not other managers or other people. Uh, what's your take on that? I don't know that we all know the rules. We all have to respect the rules. That there is a, an official that has to has to say and decide uh, what is right and what is wrong. But you have no concerns that it's over the top. Some some of the some of the tackling this season has been over the top. Do you feel it's been within within the rules? Well, they explain the rules. We can agree or disagree, but we don't have a say. So we don't have a say here. So I, I wouldn't waste any energy on that. I just find that Jack Wilshere has had kind words for you this week. Mm. Uh, has he had the conversation with the club yet about, about coming into training? And, and is there any chance at all of, of him playing his way into a, a short-term contract? We are in conversations with Jack to understand um, as well what he needs, what he's looking for. Um, it's a person and a player that has a huge admiration around everybody, not just the players or fans, but all the staff around here. And, and we are willing to help him as much as we possibly can. He knows that um, and that's the situation. And could that help be extended to see him again in an Arsenal shirt someday? Could he, could he play for the club again? I wouldn't take it that far. What I'm saying is that uh, we are in conversation with him to understand what uh, he needs, how can we help him and, and that's it. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. We'll go to Ian Abrahams from TalkSport. Hi, Michael. How are you? Hi. Um, big week ahead, isn't it, with Burnley, Wimbledon and the North London derby. And it's important that you, last weekend wasn't just a, a, a good one-off and you build on that. Absolutely. Now we have to put a run together and um, we know how much we need the results. And uh, and the performance will lead to that. And um, and with what we have to do against Burnley, we'll be much closer to, to achieve that. We had a good week to prepare the game. We know what we are facing. The challenge is going to be big because it's one of the toughest places to go in the Premier League. And, um, and we are ready for it. You spoke after the game about how much the support of your family has helped as well. Um, how, how tough have been the first sort of two months of the season been for you? It's, <laughs> you know, life brings you things and you cannot decide it. You, there are certain things that you cannot control. And uh, what it comes to you is coming. And it's coming for sure for a reason. Sometimes we don't want to see it, but... But it's coming for a reason and probably is for the right reason. And then it's about how you take it and, and how you respond to that. And the way that everybody around me responded is the way that I responded. And, um, and that's why it's been fine. Ian. It's tough because it hurts, because you want to see something different. But what you want is, is not always what happens. And things happen for a reason. And maybe what is happening, it had to happen. And it's going to be really good for the club and really good for myself and for everybody experiencing that situation. But we have to believe on that. So like is when you were a player, you would have had tough times. Yeah. You see the last couple of months of being, for want of a better expression, character building for you? Yeah. Matter? When I was a player, I made a decision in my career uh, because I had a, a, a personal issue with, with my parents. Um, I decided to go to my former club, Real Sociedad. And that was tough because I had other opportunities, but I did it to be at home next to them because I thought it was important. And uh, and I suffered. I didn't play. I was on the bench. And I always said that, that was the key moment in my career to after have more success. I don't know what, how you measure success, but to to enjoy more, to go to bigger clubs and do that, that was the right moment. And everybody that made those decisions for me and I, the experiences that I had there, it was the right thing that I needed in that moment, that at the moment, Ian, I could not see. That was, I was annoyed, upset, hungry. I was really bad with myself, with everybody. But today, reflecting and looking it back, it said it was the perfect moment in the right moment, in the right time, sorry. So 
the fun is to end on a positive. There, there is real light for you at the end of the tunnel. You, you, you come through the dark period of the last two months, you can really see the light, yeah? I can really see the light. Uh, there I'm telling you, I'm very positive uh, most of the times and I've seen the light and I can see a bright light and um, and there can be bumps on the road within that that light, but uh, I can see a lot of light. Good speech, Michael. Good luck at Burnley. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Ian. We'll go to Mark Man Bryans from Press Association. What's good, Michael? Hi. Um, there are reports uh, Burn Leno had reacted badly to being dropped from the side. I know, I know you said he was disappointed, but have you been worried at all by, by his response? No, that's not true. That's not true. He responded. He can be frustrated, but uh, he was top with his teammates in training, with everything. That's that's not true. I know you, you also said people must be ahead of you by suggesting uh, he'll play against Spurs, but have you had to make him any assurances? Uh, would, he, would he play in the Carabao Cup, for example? No, that's what I said to them and I said to the goalkeepers in the last two or three years that uh, we don't want to do that. We want to... What we want to do is empower performance and ask them to train, behave and play the best possible way. How can I guarantee somebody to do something? It wouldn't make sense with what we are demanding them to do. So it's on a daily basis in one way you do. What you did three months ago in football, it doesn't count. So it's what you're going to do today and tomorrow and that's it. You, you've managed in Europe, Arsenal have been in Europe for 20 odd years until this year. How, how hard was it watching the game the last few months? It hurts a lot. In the last few days, it was hurting to put the TV on and see those teams in there and, and don't see Arsenal there. It was painful. Is it also a bit of a, a motivation to make sure you don't have to do it again? 100%. Yeah. I don't want to be sitting there uh, with Arsenal being out of those competitions. So we know we have the focus and the trigger is there. Okay, Mark. It does mean you'd have to talk to us more. Um, just finally, Dan, if that's OK, um, Alex Lacazette is, is out of contract at the end of the season. I know he had the COVID issue at the start of the, the, start of the year, but he has played just, I think, it's 30 minutes of Premier League football so far. Are you now planning a team that doesn't involve him? Are you expecting that he might leave next summer? Or no, he's fully he's fully involved. You, you give the reasons why he hasn't played uh, more minutes and he will be back um, to the form that uh, that he can achieve and uh, I'm sure that he would be instrumental in our success. Thank you, Gary. Thanks, Mark. Just a